This golden pothos has been growing on this tree for a very long time. The nodes are very established and very healthy, and the leaves are about three feet long. This is how big golden pothos can actually grow when they're in nature. Have you ever seen something like this before? So I've got like a lot of plants and animals. So many that I've been able to establish a sustainable domestic ecosystem. My latest project has been this live planted frog tank. And with every ecosystem comes bugs. I've noticed a lot of fungus gnats. Since frogs breathe through their skin, I can't use any chemicals to kill the bugs. So I'm gonna try these sticky traps. And after two short days, these traps were full of fungus gnats. But with having a sustainable domestic ecosystem, I saw this as a great source of protein and I didn't wanna waste these bugs. So I gently picked them off with a pair of tweezers. And to complete that ecosystem, I decided to feed the bugs to my carnivorous plants that I got for my birthday. I very carefully placed two to three bugs on each of my plants. All of these plants can absolutely catch bugs by themselves, but since I just unboxed them, I wanted to give them a good source of protein to help them acclimate before I plant them at the end of the week. Make sure to like and follow to see how I turn this little shop of horrors into a fairy garden. Things in my indoor jungle that just make sense. Bugs. Plant decor hacks. Stop buying expensive plant stands when you can buy these stools at Ikea for $6. Uh-huh, you're welcome. Hack number two, buy out all the cute baskets from your local thrift store. Connect chains, twine, whatever you can find to make a cute hanging basket out of it. Hack number three, go to your local hardware store and buy copper piping. It's a really cheap way to hang a lot of plants in one spot. Hack number three, want to create one of these floating plants? I promise you, it's not magic. Get one of these outdoor hanging hoop things from Lowe's. They fit a six inch saucer like a glove. House plant tips for beginners. This is something that really helped me and I hope you guys enjoy. I use a soil meter. You can place this into the soil of plants and it'll tell you if it needs to be watered. Knack traps to capture bugs. I have this in all my plants. If your room lacks humidity, I definitely recommend getting a humidifier. I got right off of Amazon. Lastly, I use an app called Planta. You can take photos of all the plants that you have. This will keep you on track and also give you reminders of when the plant needs to be watered, fertilized, or repot. You can also click on the light meter to check the placement of your plant to see if it's a good fit. Like for more. Hey guys, welcome back to Plant Time. While I do some eye patches, I'm gonna show you guys how I water my plants. A lot of you asked how to use the moisture gauge, so I'm gonna go in depth today. I don't like following regular schedules. I feel like that usually leads to overwatering for me, so I just have to know which plants need a lot of water. Like staghorn ferns and pitcher plants. Regular watering like skin picks, monsteras, philodendrons. And little to no water like ZZ plants and snake plants. So I just stick the gauge in, see what it reads. For low water plants, I won't water until it's almost completely dry, less than one. For plants that like regular watering, once it gets under four, that's when I'll water. In plants that prefer to stay moist, I try not to let it fall below four or five. For some pro tips, make sure you shove it all the way down so you can get the most accurate reading. Especially on bigger plants because the top of the soil is pretty dry, but once you get down in there, it's pretty wet. Also, wipe it off if you're using it on plants that have an active infection. Hope that helped and stay tuned for part two. Do you have an alocasia poly and do you want to get more for free? Check out your pot. In the soil, you can find small bulbs that you can turn into a new plant. Gently scrape away some of the soil to look for these bulbs. They come in all different sizes. Some other types of alocasias have these bulbs too. Here's how many I found in my plant. I'll be rooting them with the water propagation method. I'll need a shallow container with the lid. Simply put the bulbs in the container and add water. You want the longer stem to be submerged in water, not the whole bulb. Now I cover the container so the humidity stays in. I'll open it once a day for a few minutes. As you know, Lowe's plants come with fungus gnats. That's why I'll do a neem oil drench on my new plant. I use dish soap, water, measuring spoons, cold press concentrated neem oil, and a container that is 32 ounces. I use one tablespoon of neem oil. Fill up the container all the way with water. Finally, one teaspoon of dish soap. I do the soap last so the mixture doesn't foam up. I shake it so all the ingredients combine well together. What I do next is just water the plant as usual. This drench will kill the fungus gnat's eggs that live in the soil. 
Spraying the plant will ward off the adult gnats. Quick tips on how to care for a money tree. In between waterings, you should always allow the soil to completely dry out. If the top layer of your soil looks like this, it needs to be watered. Money trees love a good watering, and you should water the plant thoroughly until it seeps through the drainage hole. This plant loves humidity. I usually let it sit next to a humidifier one or two times a week. Enjoy! Quick tips on how to care for older plants. As plants grow older, the soil becomes super compact like this, making it harder for water to provide nutrients to the roots. Creating pockets in the soil improves aeration, allowing oxygen and water to get down to the roots. I usually do this once every two weeks right before watering. Enjoy! Quick tips on how to water an orchid. Unlike most plants that requires regular potting soil, orchids uses bark, which has amazing water retention. Three ice cubes are simply not enough to water orchids. Instead, you should let warm water run through the soil and let it sit for 15 minutes. After the 15 minutes is up, the bark will absorb the water it needs and release the water it doesn't. Enjoy. Here's how I water my one and only air plant. I call him Spike. Just because this plant can exist out of soil, it still needs high light and consistent watering. I give Spike a bath approximately once a week in room temperature water. About 15 minutes is enough for him to get the proper watering. I take him out and then I let him dry on the towel. It's very simple care for these guys. This is how my Monstera looked when I purchased it from the store. The leaves were very dusty and had water residue. Not to mention the lovely bird poop. I use a garden sprayer to clean it with. The more you pump, the more it will spray. I filled it up with neem oil solution. It is 32 fluid ounces of water, one tablespoon of neem oil, and one teaspoon of dish soap. As it is a new plant from the store, I do this to prevent possible plant pests. And the solution is great for shining the leaves. What do you think? So you just got a Venus flytrap. Here are some things that you need to know if you want to keep these guys alive. If you just bought them, you're going to want to take them out of the box ASAP. The pots they come in are pretty small, so if you choose to repot them, you're going to only want to use sphagnum moss combined with perlite, nothing else. If you choose to include lava rocks, make sure you rinse them. I didn't know that before I potted this guy, so now I have some work to do. When you water them, you can only use distilled or rainwater nothing else. Contrary to what people believe, you don't have to water them every day. Their natural habitat is a bog, so what I do is I fill the water up to here, and whenever the water goes down and the moss feels dry to the touch, I know it's time to water it again. Their traps should only be set off when they have food in their mouth. To be as careful as I can, I take these tweezers here, I put some bugs into these cups, touch the center with the bug, and then let go. After you feed them, there will be some skeletons after a while, so make sure you remove those. This is my go-to soil mixture, perlite, organic potting soil, succulent soil, mix it up, and occasionally I add some orchid bark just for spice. This guy is thirsty and has all of his nursery soil, which was retaining tons of water and likely would have killed him eventually. So I got rid of all that, replaced it with my soil, and he's gonna be a happy boy now. I know my soil is super well draining because as soon as I pour water onto it, it soaks right through. It doesn't beat up on the top, it's good. Hey, do you like bananas? Okay, great. I have a little hack for what to do with those peels. Instead of throwing it out, Go ahead and chop it up. Chop up those banana peels real good and throw them in a container, fill it up with water. Now you're gonna let it soak for a little while. Now what's happening while this is soaking for at least an hour is that it's leaching phosphorus, calcium, potassium, and magnesium. And guess what? Those are excellent nutrients for the roots of all your plants, indoor and outdoor. So instead of throwing out your banana peels, use them as fertilizer. When you're all done watering your plants with the banana water mixture, you can compost or you can throw away the rest. If you're a new plant parent, it's better to go with a larger plant instead of a smaller plant. Larger plants have been through the seasons, they have a larger, more well-established root system, and they're more resilient to beginner mistakes. Calling plant TikTok. Where are my plant lovers? I know you guys don't care, but I'm gonna show you my favorite plants. This is my Monstera cutting. She's massive. My pothos in the corner, I've had her for so long. Cannot forget about my Hoya Cornosa Pink Princess. She's literally my favorite plant. 
beautiful. This is my favorite succulent. It's called a donkey tail. I'm also super obsessed with Palaeas. The absolute worst part of being a plant parent. These little whores. But it's worth it. Look at all that new growth. So cute. Today. Oh my god, what is that? Oh my god! What is that? Baby. You want to tell us. Yeah.